European Union leaders have begun a two-day energy summit looking at joint measures to contain an energy crisis that has already dented their economy and threatens to spread more hardship this winter. But finding a common answer to the energy crisis, fueled by Russia's war in Ukraine, is proving to be a tall order. Natural gas prices spiraled out of control last summer when EU members outbid one another to fill their reserves for winter. Now, EU leaders are looking to pool purchases of gas and set a temporary price cap to make sure an overheated market does not return. Meanwhile, in Canada, the Federal Statistics Agency reported annual inflation dropping to 6.9% in September, down from 7.0% the month before. In its latest CPI report, Statistics Canada says lower gas prices resulted in the slight deceleration. Well, joining us now to discuss energy and the markets is Thomas Caldwell, chairman at Caldwell Securities Limited. Sir, welcome to Forum Daily. Thank you, Nathaniel. So with your experience in capital markets, can you share with us your thoughts about energy? Well, overall, if you just take a look at the world, you have basically flawed policy. Ideologues and, and this climate change, um, uh, religion, move, whatever, have instituted measures right across the world, America, Canada, everywhere else, to diffuse investing, to pull it down in hydrocarbon energy, which is still the most efficient. That's fine as far as we go, but the pressure to do so is too early. We're not ready for that. And it is once you, once you have a flawed policy, you end up with all kinds of slapdash measures to try to cover the flack that you blew it in the first place. A, a good example, in the United States, canceling Keystone, uh, thwarting banks for making investments to energy companies for exploration, uh, basically debasing that whole industry. And we're, of course, doing it in Canada uh, because that's one of our own policies, our basic policy is uh, climate change. As a result, you just drive energy prices through the roof. Nobody took economics 101. If you cut supply, guess what, kids? Prices go up. And then throw on top of that <clears throat> a crisis, a man-made crisis like a war. Uh, and Europe has found himself in a very, very difficult position. As the preamble to this interview uh, pointed out, this is going to be a very difficult winter for, um, for Europe. But Canada has a problem, too. This has been a big energy is how we move goods, how we communicate, how we get back and forth. We're not ready. We're not all going to be using windmills and having electric cars. Maybe that's to come and maybe it should come. But we're out of sequence. And that's what's causing a problem. Interesting. And I think there's some interesting points there. But I think dialing into Europe in particular, well, what, is, what does their outlook look like with this energy scenario that they're engaging with right now? In a word, bleak. Um, everybody's kind of scrambling. It's kind of interesting. You know, Mr. Schroeder came from Germany to, to talk to our prime minister about uh, getting liquid natural gas, which Canada should have been a massive exporter of that for years because it's climate friendly. But it didn't fit the scenario at the time. And uh, we declined and said we can give them some hydrogen. But now, of course, it'll be ready in about five to 10 years. And you can see it was palpable, the look of disappointment on the man's face. He came to Canada with some solutions and he got ideologue drivel, if you will. The key in, in Europe right now is that I don't think they can deal with this problem. It's, it's going to be very difficult. They've uh, debased nuclear uh, and they became reliant on, on Russia. <clears throat> this pipeline that blew up, um, clearly, I, I would be of the opinion Russia was behind it. It's just showing them that how vulnerable they are. What that will mean, in my opinion, is that it will put pressure on Europe to put pressure on the Ukraine to cut a deal of some kind with the Russians so they can get back to what the beginnings of normal looked like here. So I think it, I think it'll result in geopolitical actions on the part of Europe because it's when your when your citizenry are freezing and gas prices, energy prices, heating prices have tripled or more, you're going to have a problem as a government. They're going to say we don't care about this nonsense in Russia. Get it solved. So that that political pressure is going to be a sidetrack of that, but it's going to be very difficult and energy prices are going to go back up. The United States, you see President Biden has asked uh, the Saudis, et cetera, to not do their cutbacks until after the elections. They didn't buy into that. Now he's doing releasing from the strategic oil reserves, which they're down to the level of around 1980. Uh, and then they, oh, we're going to replenish this at some point in time. This is a bad time to be doing this because if anything, if we look at the war, the world, war is looming, maybe a bigger, maybe a wider one. That reserve should be built up. So there's all these artificial policies trying to cover basically a flawed strategy. 
Well, it's an interesting look at, at what we're seeing across the world as an energy crisis that's, uh, that's ongoing. So thank you very much for joining us today on Forum Daily, Mr. Caldwell. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. We'll be right back after a short break. And when we return, it'll be time for Forum Daily's weekly market update with Catherine Murray, the host of The Buck Stops Here. So stay with us. We'll be right back after a short break.